Yeah, hi, everyone. Thanks for having me and uh, appreciate you turning out uh, in such a large number. So I also want to talk about the topic of, of this session, which is the future of mobility. And I want to talk about our vision uh, at Uber, how we view the future of mobility, and also how we can make some of these aspects of the future a reality today using the technology we all have in our pockets. And I'd like to spend the next 10 minutes going through those topics with you. But before we, we dive into the future of mobility, let's all look at where mobility is today. And I know this has been covered by many of my uh, colleagues who have spo spoken before, but it's always interesting to look at how mobility today, especially in urban areas, is driven by private car ownership. And as most of you know, there's more than a billion cars on the road today. And the challenge is not that we have so many cars on the road. The key challenge is the way we use them. And if you get outside of ERR later on and look into the cars driving around Frankfurt, what you'll notice is that most people sit alone in the car. And the issue with that is it creates a lot of traffic, which creates congestion and leads to pollution. And this private car ownership has a public cost. And people start to realize that more and more. And in Germany, it's, as you know, one of the very hotly debated topics of the last month. But it's not only the way cars interact with cities when we drive them. Another challenge is that we don't use the cars very much if we have them. So a typical car owned by a private person is driven only 5% of the day, 5% uh, uh, of the time. So 95% of the time, it's sitting idle either in the garage or on the street, which creates another challenge, which means we have to dedicate a significant portion of the space we have in cities, which is a very sca scarce resource, to storing cars. And in a city like Frankfurt, more than 20% of public space is dedicated to roads and parking opportunities for vehicles, which are only used 5% of the time. And I always think it's something very important to bear in mind. So what's the answer to this challenge? And Ms. Nikuta, who spoke before me from uh, BVG, said public transportation is part of the solution, and I couldn't agree more. And public transportation definitely will be the backbone of future transportation. But there's something else we need in order to make mobility so attractive that people actually let go of their private car. And if you look at New York City, it's a city for American standards with outstanding public transportation. Still, even though public transportation is very good, more than two and a half million cars drive over the bridge into Manhattan every single day. So what does it tell us? It tells us that even if public transportation is very solid, people still have individual needs it might be that it's a specific de de destination you need to go to, which you cannot uh, reach with a, with a subway, or it's late during the night and late during the day, and you don't want to take a subway. So even if public transportation is very good, you still need uh, a more flexible individual mobility option. And that's where we come into play. I think we can be a part of this um, complementing public transportation together with other options like car sharing, bike sharing, and the like. But I think having a mobility option which is on demand and individual will be key to making public transportation so successful that more and more people will let go of their car. And Uber has been doing this pretty successfully. We are in more than 600 cities today, more than 70 uh, markets, more than 70 countries, and we've done more than 5 billion trips than we, since we were founded uh, eight years ago. I'd like to show you a little bit how, over time, cities where Uber's present change and how reliability, which is one of the core aspects of making our, our product run well, changes the city. And this example of Southern California, this is the Bay of, San, uh, of Los Angeles. And what you can see is that while the service starts in the very urban center, it grows fast. It's a strong network effect. And after a few years, you can basically get a car within five to 10 minutes anywhere in, in the entire area. And that's an area of roughly 150 uh, square kilometers. So that's the suburb of the suburb of the suburb of Los Angeles, where you can get a car reliably every hour of the day. It's also true for other cities which aren't in the US. And I've brought the example of Paris. And Paris is the same story. We started in the very city, city center. But now you can get a, a car within a few minutes 
36, uh, 365 days a, a year, also in the banlieues, in the suburbs, which traditionally have very poor connection to public transportation as well. And in Paris, it shows also a different side of, uh, of the Uber story, which is an employment story as well. In Paris, more than 15,000 people earn money driving on the Uber platform. And of these 15,000 people, a third of them has been unemployed before uh, driving on the Uber platform. So it shows you there's also lots of employment opportunities in this new mobility space. So um, Los Angeles, Paris, these are global mega cities. So the question I get asked often is, but does it also work in more rural areas? And if you talk to politicians in rural areas, lack of mobility is actually one of the top issues that people in these rural areas uh, point to. And I just brought you one example from the Croatian coast where we launched Uber last year during the summer to tap into the strong demand of tourists during the summer. And we anticipated that during the winter time, the product wouldn't work anymore. So what you can see here is that even during the winter time, only built on local demand by people actually living there and local drivers living there and earning money on the platform, we still managed to maintain the product. Obviously, you would have to wait a bit longer maybe than in New York or London or Paris to get a car, but in rural areas, people are also willing to wait longer. So this is why a product like Uber also worked in the more rural areas. Another aspect which, which is really important is how we complement pu public transportation. And I've just brought you one, of, uh, one example of London where you've seen on the blue lines the major routes Uber riders are taking, and the white dots are all subway stations in London. And what we see is that people really use it to complement their way to work or wherever they're trying to go. And over a third of all Uber rides actually end or begin at a subway station in London. So people already use it in order to build a most, the most efficient way for them to get, from, to get to A to B. And it's most efficient to take a subway or uh, a bus for very long rides, but then for the last mile or the first mile, something like Uber is probably the better idea. So this is London again, and it's a great example because it shows you how changes in the mobility landscape um, also changes user patterns. London introduced a night tube last year, something which BVG already had for a long time, uh, which means that you can take a tube throughout the entire night. And these are the two uh, tube lines that have been introduced. And what you can see is that in the city center, which is the light gray area, demand for Uber dropped drastically because now people could at night get, an, uh, get, a, get a subway and just drive where they needed to go. But in the outer districts of this new night tube, the demand for Uber increased drastically because now for the last mile, people needed to get home. They didn't want to walk for a mile in the middle of the night. So in the outer skirts, the demand for Uber increased. And it's a great example to show you how actually Uber and public transportation can interact. Another key component in order to, to be successful for us is affordability. And affordability is mainly driven by utilizing the assets we have on the street even better. And this is our, one of our core products, which is called Uber Pool. And what it means basically is that you have two people that take a ride in the general, uh, general direction, which is the same, but not the exact same route. And what we do is we tell people, are you willing to share the ride and uh, save money but there's, there might be a two-minute detour which you have to do to, take, um, to pick someone else up. And this is one of the core products we're, we're using in order to get cars off the road and offer more affordable rides. And now in cities like Los Angeles or San Francisco, more than half of all the Uber trips are actually pool trips, and 20% of global trips are pool trips. So another thing which I'd like to point out is that Platforms like Uber can actually be catalysts for new technologies to, be, to come on the road. And one example is electric vehicles. So usually drivers on the Uber platform drive the cars quite a bit, so they renew the cars more often. It's much more easy to introduce new technologies on the market. And one example is electric vehicles, where we've just this week announced that, we'll, that we commit to having 100% pure electric vehicles in London uh, by 2025 and only use EVs and hybrids by 2019. So this whole debate around how can we speed up introduction of electric vehicles is actually something which we believe we can play a role in getting that to market a bit faster. 
obviously, autonomous vehicles is also uh, an important topic for us, and it will help us to increase reliability and affordability. And as some of you may know, we have autonomous cars in commercial applications in four US cities. There's still a safety pilot in the car, but it's already a fully autonomous vehicle, which you can actually get with the tap of a button. We're also working on vertical takeoff and landing. Next year in Dubai, we will launch a vertical takeoff and landing pilot where you can order uh, basically, a, you can order something like this to get from A to B. And in closing, I think we can, we can bring our technology to market and help turn cities into something uh, which is more beneficial for all of us. Thanks, guys.